This is Changemakers with Katie Gore, finding the right solutions for the affordable housing community. Today's Changemaker is Jeffrey Patterson, the CEO of the Cuyahoga Metropolitan Housing Authority, one of the 10 largest housing authorities in the country. He manages a $230 million budget, approximately 1,000 employees, and nearly 55,000 residents. Jeffrey, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. You have served the residents of Cuyahoga County for almost 30 years. And for folks who aren't familiar with the area, where is it? How would you describe it? And what's going on there? Cuyahoga uh, Housing Authority is located um, in Cleveland, Ohio. So we serve uh, the city of Cleveland, but we also uh, serve the uh, surrounding um, cities within uh, Cuyahoga County. I've been with the Housing Authority for about 18 years, and I've worked in the public sector for another uh, 12 on top of that. And Cleveland's a great place to be. It's a great community. It's one that has a lot of uh, good people, good hardworking people, and one that you know really wants to try to do things in the right way. I know you have a passion for tackling problems with innovative solutions, and we have talked on several occasions about housing and policy and the crucial nature of affordable housing, but it's more than a roof and affordable rent. For example, a few years back, you partnered with the Cleveland nonprofit to provide reliable broadband to your residents. Why are initiatives like that so crucial? Housing is a critical aspect of society you need to have a roof, you need to have a place to live. But there are so many things that are necessary to support that roof and support the people that live under that roof. And right now, you know, there's nothing that is more important than um, people having internet access. You know, at one time it was like a, what you may want to call a tool for the elite. It was something for, you know, those that was a little bit extra. But now the internet has become a necessity. Uh, You cannot really function successfully for a long period of time without having some degree of internet access. And we thought it was important to uh, work with uh, Digital C to uh, provide that internet access to many of our residents. We were able to successfully do that through the uh, Connect Home initiative. You know, CMHA is taking a real person-centric approach to affordable housing. And like you mentioned, digital access, but you've also got literacy initiatives going on too. What are some of the things that you're most excited about right now? Well, wow, it's it's funny that you mentioned that. Uh, I just got a word today that we were given a grant opportunity to put together these academic learning pods at our community centers, which would allow us to provide an area for 18 uh, students at each facility to come in and to um, be able to complete their uh, academic assignments uh, that are coming from schools. A lot of the schools, especially those in the uh, Cleveland Municipal School District, are operating virtually. So this will provide a a space where the kids can come and be able to complete those assignments, have access to the internet, and be able to continue their uh, educational endeavors. Well, congratulations on that. That's definitely an initiative that you're moving and you're you're moving in the right direction and you're combining services. Any other partners that you want to call out? Well, the school district is is, is a great partner uh, with us. Uh, Digital C has done a, a very good job in terms of uh, of uh, helping us to be able to identify uh, places where we could get internet access. And I have to commend uh, the the philanthropic organizations uh, in our area, the uh, the Cleveland uh, Foundation, uh, the George Gunn Foundation, uh, the Mandel Foundation, and the St. Luke's Foundation all have been very supportive of CMHA and the Housing Authority in terms of trying to reach out and to find ways to provide uh, different levels of uh, services to help benefit our residents. You know, Cleveland's one of the major cities in Cuyahoga. I mean, it's, you know, the quintessential upper Midwest, older American city in the industrial belt, but 
you've combined all the foundation, you've combined social services, you guys have been active even in the development space. Over the years, we've seen many cities undertake major efforts to address infrastructure, social service, housing stock issues, and really transform their communities into a world-class destination. And Cleveland, Cuyahoga, you guys are no exception to that. I mean, you've got several community amenities going on with the Riverfront, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, all of the stadiums. But how does your agency make sure that there are actual affordable housing opportunities for certain service industries or the entertainment or tourism industry? Uh, We've been able to kind of work with uh, folks in our community to let people know what we have available. Um, We also are trying to use um, project-based vouchers to get into developments where we can uh, create some housing mobility opportunities as well as some mixed income opportunities for people to be able to enjoy some of those uh, different opportunities that you expressed earlier. It's just a matter of having a conversation, having an ongoing dialogue, not being frustrated when everything doesn't work, but being resilient until you find some things that work. And we've been um, successful in that regard in finding some different things that we're able to do to try to serve the residents, but more importantly, serve the community as a whole. Well, what's been the most challenging about developing affordable housing in Cleveland? You know, it's it's probably um, just kind of putting the deals together, you know, trying to find the right amount of tax credits, the right amount of subsidy, the pricing of the construction, all those different things that you have to pull together, plus making sure that you have a real, true a community engagement process where you're reaching out to the residents, you're reaching out to the community at large, and you're trying to develop something that, you know, is not something that's going to solve a a five-year problem, but something that's going to be there for a while. It is going to be something that's going to be sustainable and serve to the betterment of an entire community. And that's uh, one of the things that we've been really working on and have had, I think, some degree of success with. You know, a lot of agencies are going the way of RAD to get some of that capital and some of that investment and spur some of that development. Um, is that what your organization is also doing or do you have other solutions? Well, we've been working um, particularly uh, with the RAD program. We had several developments that that has worked out well for us. And we have an initiative that's called our 2045 initiative, and that is our plan to uh, recapitalize our housing assets over the next several years. In doing so, we're looking at our high-rise buildings and how we can recapitalize those. And then we're looking at our family uh, sites to figure out what can be done with those to make them uh, more sustainable in the years to come. And the RAD program, I think, provides an excellent opportunity and an excellent source of funding to be able to uh, move in that direction. You know, for people who maybe aren't familiar with affordable housing and the access to affordable housing, they don't understand the demand or the lack of supply. Tell us and tell our listeners here, what is it like? What's the waiting list like right now? Oh, wow. The waiting lists are are long for our our housing choice uh, voucher program. You know, traditionally we had a waiting list. We, We go through a lottery process. So we'll have upwards of 35 to 40,000 people apply to be on a waiting list of 10,000 folks that are randomly selected. And then we go through those 10,000 names. For our regular uh, public housing list, you know, we've had lists as long as five to 8,000 of people who are just uh, looking for housing uh, throughout our community. So it is extensive, it is long. Now you are trying to, you know, measure the needs of the community, but people are in housing for a lot of different reasons. I think sometimes, you know, people don't always understand that everybody that's in housing is is not someone who has been there forever. You know, we have a lot of people who have raised families there. We have a lot of people who are seniors who have lived exciting lives, very busy lives, very successful lives, but have gotten to a point where they don't uh, want to own homes. They can't, Mm -hmm. you know, 
keep up the maintenance and things of a home. So they want to be somewhere where they can live comfortably. And a lot of our facilities allow that to be uh, a viable option for them. Also, some of the conflict, not just with the accessibility and the waiting list volume. I mean, you you know, you could have five to 8,000 people waiting for 20 units of turnover possibly, right? So the turnover is also a problem. And how long do people wait when they're on the waiting list to actually get in to some of those units? You know, it, it depends on, um, you know, where you are in the process and what type of units you're looking for. If you are looking for a unit that's a one bedroom, there's a, that, those are in high demand. If you are a senior and you're over 62, you know, we usually are able to have enough units available that uh, in most instances, we usually can um, get you ha- housed in a reasonable time. So a lot of time it depends on what you're looking for, where you want to live, what are your qualifications, and what do we have available. And it's good that applicants have a choice too, you know, that they are able to determine what life, what access to education, what access to healthcare amenities, um, or what property amenities they want to have. So there, it is good that they've got the choices of that. We just don't have the supply to meet the demand still. Yep. All right. Well, let's pause right there. Coming up in part two of my chat with Jeffrey Patterson the CEO of the Cuyahoga Metropolitan Housing Authority. Jeffrey will tell us why resiliency is needed to succeed in the world of affordable housing. You have to be able to keep coming no matter what. I mean, Mm -hmm. no matter how hard we work to address the housing needs, there's still going to be housing needs. So you have to have the ability to want to work and, and continue to try to make things better for everyone. Thanks for listening to Changemakers with Katie Gore. To find out more about Katie, go to quadel.com. That's Q-U-A-D-E-L.com. This has been a production of Forbes Books Radio.